Hi everybody! Perhaps you remember one of the first videos I published on this channel, which was about creating a fire effect using particle systems in God of War. However, since it was a 3D effect, the same approach doesn't always apply. That's why this time we will create a 2D fire effect using noise textures and shaders. It's possible that you've already seen a similar effect because it's not something new or groundbreaking. However, with this tutorial you can be sure that it's up to date and works with God of War and every line will be explained in detail so that after watching you'll understand why the fire works this way. Let's start with creating a new 2D scene and adding a sprite 2D as a child node. So right click scenes, create new, create scene, 2D it is correct, let's call it fire and OK. Right click at child node, uh, what was I saying, sprite 2D, OK, sure, there we go. <clears throat> and we will start with a black texture, so there something would be there. And let's cancel the centered so we can see it right here. Now we need to assign a new material, a new shader material, of course. Click the material and create a new shader, which we will call fire and put it not to scenes, but to shaders right here. OK, type canvas item. This is correct. Create. All right, let's find it. Here it is. Double click and open the shader editor. Let's put it over here. Very well. So, canvas item, correct. We are in 2D. And of course, we will add a render mode unshaded because we don't want the fire to reflect any light. So, <clears throat> what to start with? As we know, Flames are typically brightest on the inside and gradually darken towards the edges. Therefore, we will define two basic colors as uniform parameters. We'll call them base color and edge color. Let's do it. So, uniform vec4 base color is source color, so we would have the color picker in the inspector and default value let's set to 1.75 uh, 0.3 and 1 that would be some shade of i think uh, orange yellow something like that we'll see it very soon and similarly a uh, unif Uniform Vec4 <coughs> Edge color again source color and the default value let's set to one for red point one for blue zero for green and one for alpha okay and we should also prepare for a situation where we might need to make the fire more transparent. So let's add one more uniform parameter and call it fire alpha. This time it would be float. <coughs> fire alpha. And we will add a hint range. So a slider to select value from 0 to 1 would appear in the inspector starting with fully opaque as the initial value. All right and into the fragment we will start with a simple color so let's define fire color and set it to base color to have something to start with and set color of this fragment with this pixel vec4 and fire color 
RGB component plus fire alpha as the alpha component. Okay, we can already see something here, and we should also see these parameters in the shaders parameter, shader parameters. So this is the simple and convenient way to modify them and observe the result. Okay. Now, of course, we'll need the ability to transition from the base color to the edge color. For this, the mix function is best suited, which works the same way as LARP in GDScript. So it is a linear interpolation within a given range using a white multiplicator. Let's first add the multiplicator as another uniform variable. Uniform float. Let's call it fire filter. And again, int range would be from zero, but this time not to one. Let's put it to three. It will allow us to do some interesting effects later. So let's start with point two. <clears throat> now we can change the fire color definition in the fragment function. So instead of just base color, we will add a mix from edge color, which is darker, to base color. And we will use the fire filter multiplicator here, which means now it is some kind of orange. And if we change the value of fire filter in the inspector, we can, result, uh, we can observe the result of mixing both colors. Zero means uh, edge color, uh, one corresponds to the base color, and <clears throat> within the range it's a blend, uh, it's a combination of both colors. Now note that if you increase fire filter beyond one, the color will lighten further and eventually reaching white. This can be used for various explosions, flashes, and similar effects. Let's revert to the original value. However, we would prefer to change the color gradually from bottom to up like a gradient, wouldn't we? We will enhance our mix using the Y coordinate of the current pixel. So let's create a new float variable and call it noise, which would be fire filter plus UV Y, because as we know, the Y coordinates start at the top and goes to the bottom, it's zero here and one here. All right, and we need to use this noise in our formula. So instead of fire filter, let's change it to uh, noise. Okay, let's drag the fire filter slider again and observe the gradient effect. Okay. Up and down, great. We should have the foundation of our fire, and it's time to add a nice texture to help shape the flames. Gadol makes this quite convenient for us, because we can generate various types of noise textures that will be suitable for our purpose. Let's get to it. We'll start with a uniform parameter for the texture. I'll put it here, and to do it uniform, for texture we have sampler 2D and call it noise texture and we'll give a hint default white so we don't if we don't assign anything it would be just a white color and other parameters you usually use filter nearest and this is important repeat enable <clears throat> Uh, it's important to set repeat enable so that our fractal noise repeats nicely, which we will use in the final stage for animating the fire. So we'll click on the new parameter, there it is here, noise texture, and create a simple noise texture 2D here. Okay, clicking again, and let's make a fast noise light, let's click it. Okay, we can just leave it as it is. There are uh, many settings, but for now, we'll stick with the default uh, simplex smooth fractal. 
Now we can incorporate the noise into our calculation. Let's define the pixel coordinates that would be equal to UV at the start, and we will change them using the time variable later. We will do it here and vec2, let's call it just UV, lowercase is internal UV uppercase. Next, we will need the color of the pixel from the noise texture at the given coordinates. Since the texture is generated as a grayscale, we can use any color component because the value will be the same for red, green, green and blue. Let's take red for example. So float, we'll call it fire noise, noise is texture, another internal function, noise texture and the coordinates are UV, lowercase and the R component because we need only a float, not a vector. And we will multiply our current weight multiplicator with the value of fire noise. So here we can add fire noise multiplied by this addition. Okay, our effect is finally starting to look like fire. However, we could use a bit more color fading towards the top, so we'll subtract the current fire filter from our formula and multiply the result by the Y coordinate. So we have here, and let's uh, do this, subtract the fire filter, fire filter, and multiply by UVY. All right, it seems to be darker here, but the fire is hardly visible, of course, and I'd like to glow it a bit. Furthermore, the red background should be replaced with a transparent color. Let's fix the alpha value of the final result. We will keep it within the 0 to 1 range, so in case, uh, just in case uh, the noise value is greater than 1, we will clamp it. Let's get to the color part. This can stay as it is, and here we will use fire alpha multiplied by uh, the noise clamped. So it would be clamp noise zero one. Wait for it. Okay, much better. Now let's add another multiplier and call it fire power, because we definitely want it, as I said to uh, shine a little bit. Uh, another float. Uniform float fire power and again the hint range and this time from 1 to let's say 20. That could be okay. Starting with uh, 10 very well, and let's add it to the formula. So there will be a one more multiplication by fire power. Fire power. All right, a very nice fire. It's time to bring its flames to life. Let's add one last uniform parameter that will control the direction of the noise texture's movement, creating the impression of burning flames. So it would be uniform, this time vec2, because we want to set up the direction in uh, both x and y uh, coordinate. Uh, and we'll call it fire speed and vec2. Default value for x would be 0 and 1 for y, uh, from y, so the flames would just go up slowly, which is what we want. What's wrong? Yeah, sure, no column, but equals, of course. Okay. Vec. Sorry, again. Now, this is fine. And we will use the speed factor to modify the coordinates to get the texture color from. So instead of just UV, it's finally time to add the time uh, plus time multiplied by fire 
speed. Wait for it. Ah, it's, it's burning. It's burning and it looks perfect. Is that, is that all? Of course not. What if we want something other than a square fire? We can add a masking texture that allows us to shape this effect a bit more. Let's start by adding one more uniform parameter. And it would be one more texture. Uniform Sampler 2D. Let's call it Mask Texture. And again, hint default white. That's all we need here because the texture would be pretty simple. And um, yeah, pretty simple. We'll use a curve. Let me show you. Uh, now, we just need to add the appropriate pixel color from the new texture into our calculation. So we will define right here a new float called mask. And this mask would be the pixel from the mask texture at the UV coordinates. And again, we can choose any component. All of them would be the same, red, green, blue. Uh, into the noise, we will use it here multiplied by mask. We will simply cancel out all pixels that are that has mask equal to zero or black and display the rest. And of course, uh, this is only for the noise part for the alpha value. We also need to multiply the final color here by mask. Okay, nothing happened, of course, because uh, the default value is white, which means it's one everywhere and the multiplication has no effect. But now we will do the shaping. So let's open this parameter in the inspector. Here it is. And this time, instead of a noise texture, we'll use a curve texture. Let's do it. Click it. Now a new curve. Click it again and we will make the form of the flame. Let's start with some preset, for example, linear. Now it's different, but not exactly what we want. We would like to have some kind of this flame, right? Yeah, definitely better. Or up, down, or down, up. Anything, we can add new points if we want to shape it even more, anything we want. So I think we can consider our effect finished. Such fire can definitely find a lot of uses, whether as a decoration or perhaps as an obstacle that the hero of our game needs to overcome. And we can control the strength of the fire as I just showed and other parameters through a script, which could simulate, for example, extinguishing of the fire. I forgot to mention that if your fire shows some kind of artifacts here, like the texture is not totally seamless, let's click seamless, the seamless property of the noise texture, make it on, and now it's smooth and perfect. I changed the fractal algorithm here to something else, not sure what it was, but uh, where it is. Yeah, still simplex, but it's reached instead of the original FBM and looks like just another type of the fire. So as I said, uh, the uh, possibilities to customize that are boundless. The possibilities for further customization are unlimited. You can experiment with other types of noise textures or add your own add a second mask for a smoke effect, and so on. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as usual, I would greatly appreciate any support in the form of likes, subscribes, comments, or even getting my book about Godot. Have a wonderful day, and see you in the next video.